Welcome everybody! So this is the first episode ever of Trailblazer Tales, which is an exciting moment for me. I really got tired of blogging, so here comes a bunch of screencasts for you to learn Trailblazer. And in the first set of episodes, I want to discuss the basics of what we call operation in Trailblazer. And that's an abstraction layer for structuring code. But anyway, in this episode, I really want to focus on the setup and on the actual business code to be refactored. And you might be sitting there wondering, what is business logic? And if you want to know what is business logic, just look at a typical Rails controller action. I got a beautiful example right here. And in my understanding, business logic is everything that is run after the request was routed and before a response is rendered, like a JSON document or an HTML page or whatever. So basically the meat in a controller action or in, in, your, in, in your code is business logic. And as you can see in this example code, and I don't think this is a really unrealistic controller or anything, um, but the business logic usually is grouped into different slices. So we get something like authorization and authentication happening, and then you might have some data processing where you parse or where you massage the params hash and check if there is a certain element. So you basically prepare the incoming data from the form submission or from an API call, and then you have validations happening. Is that data actually useful? And is that data sane? And if that data is sane, you might create um, a database row using active record and you pass in the submitted data and maybe something like the current user, and then you persist this data. And after the persistence, you might even send out an email notification or anything. So you have different layers like um, authentication, data processing and parsing, and then validating stuff, and then touching the persistence layer, and maybe even use something like callbacks where you actually send out notifications or whatever. And the interesting part here is that, I mean, this code is not particularly messy or anything, but it's, it's kind of hard to read. It has a lot of ifs and elves for uh, error handling and also for control flow. And it's kind of hard to extend. So if you decide three months later that there should be another email sent out, you have to go through the code and you check like, if this, if that, if that, ah, here we are, okay. I mean, you could have used a comment or something, but you have to find that spot. And then you, you know, you know, you add something like send another email, whatever. And so I don't know, the maintainability could be better. So it's not super messy, but you know how it is. It starts growing really fast and you have like a thousand ifs and else, and then it's kind of impossible to extend this code. And the Trailblazer operation jumps in here and helps you structuring that code. And I'm gonna show you how to do that now. In order to refactor this code to an operation, I usually start with tests. So, so I mean, the first step is to add the Trailblazer operation gem, obviously. And then what I do is I add a test file and the test file sits in, in my, in my world sits in test and then in a directory called concepts. That's kind of like a Trailblazer thing. And since we're writing an operation towards a blog post, there's a blog post directory and then a file called operation underscore test. And this is kind of our um, flavor. You, you can structure that the way you want and you don't have to use mini spec, uh, mini test, sorry. Um, we will show you how to do our spec tests in another episode. But I really like uh, assert equal, that's all I need. And I love the structure of mini test spec. So, so here we go with the mini test spec uh, test. And the first thing I do in my test case is I just basically Add, enter the constant of the operation, the class name that I want to test. And as you can see, there is already some trailblazerism going on here. So an operation usually sits in a namespace. So the first constant is the, the actual concept that we're focusing on. And in this case, it's a blog post. And then there is the technology or the abstraction layer. That's an operation. And then the operation class itself is named after a verb like create or notify or archive or something like that. And if you follow Rails naming, and we do that because we love the convenience that it brings you like automatic reloading of classes in development and automatic loading and so you don't have to require stuff. So this class blog post operation create goes in a certain directory in app concepts. So that's the kind of trailblazer folder in Rails. And then in that concept, you have the blog post and then you have a directory operation and then the file create.rb. And that matches to this constant. And so I already created some skeleton file. And as you can see, there is a class create and it inherits from trailblazer operation and it sits in a namespace blog post operation. So please use this style. It will make Rails automatically load and create namespaces for you automatically. 
And that might look a bit crazy and I might do another episode on Ruby naming and Ruby namespaces because lots of people are confused, but this is all pure Ruby. This has nothing to do with Trailblazer. Yeah, namespaces and modules and classes, this is just Ruby. So we have our operation code in place. We have a small tiny test and the first thing I do is I run this test. I have a small alias called T and you can find out in the readme of this video how to configure that in your shell. So T runs a certain test file in, in, in a Rails application or a Ruby application. And so I'm gonna run the test concepts blog post operation test. I'm just gonna run it and it's probably gonna say everything is fine because I didn't do anything. As you can see, it works. So in order to extract the logic from the controller to the operation, what I do in this example is I'm just gonna copy what all the logic we wanna extract, I'm gonna copy that over to the operation and I'm gonna skip the authorization logic in this episode just to make it a little bit faster and we can discuss that in, a, in the next episode or whatever. So I'm copying this right here and I'm gonna make it a comment of course so, so we can see what we are actually um, extracting. 